Uh, I'm still getting stuff set up here. I'm going to put some music on and I got to run and grab some stuff.
All right, well, I'm trying to get things started here. Uh, perfect timing that that song faded out. Let me just lower that down some. Hopefully everything sounds good. I'm just going to check real quick on my phone here. As I do. Okay, music's still going. Good. Good. Give me a moment here. Let me just triple check everything. Awesome. Everything sounds super duper sweet. Well, hey folks, uh, Peter here. I guess we can have the starting soon because we're starting now. Thank you for joining me here tonight or whenever you watch this, I guess. Am um, I dropping frames? Nope. Perfect. All right. Why does my webcam look kind of wonky? Oh, well. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be working on some watches tonight if you haven't been here before. Or anything. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I work on watches. I am a watchmaker. I've got a few here that I'm going to work on today. Um, I've got this uh, vintage chronograph that I actually had a movement. Uh, I think it's a Valjoux 7730. Or 7731, I forget exactly which. It'll say inside. Uh, this is a vintage chronograph. Fun stuff. I don't know. I've just got on this big chronograph kick lately. And I've never worked on that movement. Um, which is why I have this. This big box here. Uh, this has a bunch of compartments in it. So I can lay out pieces. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. So on and so forth. Take it off, reverse for putting it back together. Um, that's going to be kind of a learning. I haven't even taken it out of the packaging yet. It's going to be a fun learning experience, I, th I think. Should be anyway. Okay, good. That doesn't squeak. I hate when these squeak. It's the worst. Uh, I'm going to do that later. I've got a giant pile of stuff right there. Uh, first thing I want to work on, though, actually, is uh, turning down this microphone just a hair. Uh, I've got a number of containers here, as you can see. A bunch of stuff floating around in there. A bunch of stuff floating around in here. I've got this case right here. And... Part of a movement here. Movement there. And I think this is not for this. I've got a lot of watch parts just kind of floating around. So <laughs> sometimes I lose track of which is which. It doesn't say anything. That doesn't say anything. Close it up and move it over for now. Uh, yeah, I've done some rearranging. I did some cleaning up in here uh, since the last time you guys saw me. I've got a new kind of my project box now. That's what this tray's from. Right here. Uh, yeah, I cleaned it up and then I just loaded it up with watches again over here. An ongoing struggle trying to keep everything neat and organized. Um... Yeah, I just want to turn on that music for me. Hopefully you guys can hear it okay, though. I just want it down a little bit for me. Uh, I probably have this. <laughs> you think I'd be a little more organized than this, but this is how it goes sometimes. Not that one. This might be it here. 
Nope, that is a, uh, that's a, another chronograph that I'm actually working on. Not you. Okay. These three, I 3D printed these myself. These little trays with the lids that lock on. Works out pretty well. Um, all right, so I don't know where the entirety of this movement is. This is just parts. We've got a air spring separated from the balance. Balance is in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and actually grab some of these parts. This is actually still taped shut. Um, Let's see if I can't make a working watch here with, with these parts. It's probably an easier way to do this. I'm making a, <laughs> I'm making this way much more work than it should be. Why right, can I see this? There we go. I haven't done one of these in a while. I need to get back into it. Winter is here. I could be out uh, clearing some snow, but I, I'll do that later. <laughs> Not right now. So I think, okay. This might be it here. Yeah, oh yeah, there's stuff in here, okay. I think what had happened is I took this with me to work to use a part or something. And then maybe didn't even use it. This is going to be a Seiko 7002. You know, I don't know how the dial feet are going to work, if they even are. But I really like that dial. <laughs> I might have to find a dress 7002 case. Literally just for this dial. That's actually really sick. Uh, anyway, we're going to set that aside. I've got parts everywhere. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions or anything, just let me know. We got this sweet microscope and I can switch between things. You can see. Uh, except where are you? Why are you in front of that? I don't know why that's in front. Oh, you know what? Put it back. <laughs> uh, move that down. I don't know why that's in front of it, but whatever. That's actually upside down. There we go. That looks better. Um, okay. Word. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we've got, uh, what do we got here? We got our mainspring barrel. Mainspring assembly. Center wheel there. Okay. I'm just going to see if there are parts enough here. I, I obviously have enough parts, but I got, I got to see what fits where. And 
another cool dial. Uh, but I'm going to stick with the original one, even though it's missing dial feet. There's no dial feet on this one. Uh, that is something I want to try someday, is uh, soldering dial feet. Okay. Get out some gears here. This box is actually sealed up when it was sent to me. This is from uh, another watchmaker. He was uh, he was working at this jewelry store that was closing up, um, and he literally had like just a bag of stuff. He's like, "I'm never gonna touch any of this. I don't want it. Take it." Kind of forgot about it all. Okay, I'm gonna move this over here so I, don't, so I stop covering up that camera. Um, I think we might be good to close this up. I'm not exactly sure how the screw situation is gonna work, but we're gonna figure it out. Let me put that up there so it's out of the way of that camera. Uh, okay, let's see what all we've got here. I'm just going to start putting stuff together. A seconds wheel. Intermediate wheel. Goes under, so I have to take this back out. The desk that this arm is on keeps clicking every time I move the edge of my elbow. I'm going to have to scooch forward just a hair. Turn this here, maybe we can get a better angle. Okay. Now I didn't put the title uh, with the watch that I'm working on because like I said, I've got two of them here. I might get to the second one, I might not. Um, so I didn't want to that's not that too bad. So I just put a couple of watches. This right here is our click. Okay, we'll just let that sit there for now. And what I really want to do with one of these uh, movements Oh, assembled in Hong Kong. Wow, I haven't seen that before. Well, I'm going to scooch. Camera up a little bit there. Wow, okay, cool. Where it is? There it is. Uh, yeah, so what? Oh, this actually is 7009. I thought I saw it say 702. Am I crazy? That says 702. So we're going to get rid of that. <laughs> That's weird. I 
Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know what the difference is between the two movements. Generally speaking, stuff is pretty interchangeable. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, interchangeable between like 7002, 7009, uh, 6, I think it was a, a 1, I don't remember. Again, off the top of my head. And maybe I'm playing a dangerous game trying to mix and match some of these parts. But usually they're pretty interchangeable. It's like one's got... Uh, like another jewel in it or something. Wait, can I can I take this out? Okay. This all seems to be working so far here. Focus for you guys is out. That's one thing that I always have to balance. have to do then go back to this guy might have to just use the whole other kit another box of stuff Though, that we've got a two on the uh, rotor, but then a nine on the plate here. Who knows? Maybe I had that wind up wrong. Hard to see. What's up, Daniel Lopez? Welcome in. Got this up in the background. Awesome. Well, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if not, enjoy working. <laughs> Thanks for stopping in. Hmm. Get up real close here. Hmm. 
Maybe I'm missing something. Well, first, let's get that. Out of the way. Let's touch that lines up that all should 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 work <laughs> of course this isn't like a final assembly or anything I just want to see what is and isn't working here get something figured out I think I was just missing the um, the pivot there. That seems like it moves. You're wondering what the heck I'm doing here. So this is these gears are all touching, right? The gear train. the power source there uh, I've got a few cleaning machines nothing I'm gonna use today simply because I it just takes way too long um, also my cleaning machines need some work. Really wish I had an autofocus on it. <laughs> I mean, I think I can... Okay, making sure nothing changed there. Um... I have to manually adjust this. There's a little knob up here. Um, the camera itself is really good, but it just doesn't have autofocus. <laughs> um, which I thought that would all be matched up with what I see. Like that's in focus for me. Blurry. That's just how it goes, though. Just have to keep an eye and make sure to adjust uh, that camera. Okay, what else are we looking at here? Well, I do have to take that plate off now that I know that it works. Uh, but yes, I... Uh, cleaning machines. Uh, they're super old and they need some work. Basically, I want to replace all the wiring on them. And any switches that I can. Uh, I've met somebody I can actually talk to about. Uh, they can at least try to give me some insight. I guess I don't have anything set in stone yet. Um, just to help me kind of figure out what I need to do, where I need to be looking for stuff. I'm going to go back over here for a bit. Because we're going to be doing some stuff. 
Seems like there's not enough screws in here. In the in this box. Luckily, I've got more screws. Uh, those screws are a different length. Those three seem pretty good. Pretty matched. Hmm. Yeah, this might actually be a, a 7009 and it just has a different rotor. Um, again, it's not from me, so. Okay. All that hard work of lining it up, gone. Oh, okay, it's not broken or anything. I keep looking at parts on here like, okay, what's broken? What's wrong? Why was this not put together? Why is this not a functioning watch? Uh, so far, nothing's sticking out. Yeah, that's in view for me. Oh, where'd you just go? Ah, oh, shucks. The clip that I was just holding just went flying. <laughs> um, I always go into a mode of don't move until I look at everything first. Well, shoot. I mean, I have other clips. But if I don't have to grab another one or anything, I don't, I'd like to not. <laughs> um, maybe we switch gears and start building that other uh, plate. And why do I have that other one apart? Uh, again, that's a good question. Well, and I heard it too. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to set this aside again. I'm, I'm still confused as to why it's a, uh, a zero zero nine with the uh, wrong rotor on the back. We'll keep that there for now. Oh, that sucks. Luckily, I'm in a very small room, so there's not super too many places it could be. But uh, it's just a matter of how much time I want to look for it. Always something to consider. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, keep some stuff out there. Uh, I had a plate here.
This dial actually could work for that case. The uh, case here, the crown is not at three. It's at four, or like 3.8 or whatever they call it. Uh, Alright. Cool, 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 cool. The same thing. This one's been cleaned and um, the plate in here. I don't know if you can fully see it or not, but the plating on some of the components has actually worn off. I always found that weird, but it's the same thing. So uh, let's. Go. Whoops. Start at the start, huh? And again, maybe I should do some mixing and matching of parts. Interesting, this wheel is actually white tone, whereas the one that was on here was brass tone or yellow toned. Interesting to say the least. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do any timing or cleaning today. Oiling, all that fun stuff. If I can get those two cleaning machines up and running, that would be fantastic. Something else you can do with, with screws when you have different size screws is um, you take stock of what you have and then the uh, process of elimination and reasoning as to why which ones fit where. I believe that's all the screws from the box there. Eh? Four of those longer ones. Three are going to be used in this plate here. Fourth one is for the balance. That leaves three tiny screws. Three tiny screws. Two are needed for the uh, pallet bridge. And one for the uh, center wheel bridge here. Those three short screws all seem to be near-ish the same size. Here, I'll actually get this on the on the camera for you. Also, if you're wondering just how tiny these parts are. We got three screws there. Right? Oh, I had the focus there. Three screws. The one on the right is like, is just a hair, like one thread longer. I don't know if you can fully see that or not. So this one on the right is the one that goes here. And it's, it's literally that close of a difference. Just enough of a change right there. Close of a difference seems like a weird phrase, so. That screwdriver's everywhere. Right there in the sweet spot. Uh, so yeah, same thing here with the gear train.
I think there was something going on with this watch where it would run for me and then just stop out of nowhere. And I don't know if that's an issue with oiling. Or something more serious. Okay. Let's see if this works better this time. I'm gonna grab it from here. There we go. Three of the longer screws. Like I've got a whole camera set up here and I'm literally just sitting with my face as far away from this as possible, just, just eyeballing it. <laughs> I guess I'm fortunate that uh, my eyes and hands work well enough that I can do that. Whoa. Uh, these tweezers here are not steel. So the blades on this set. I have roughly three sets of screwdrivers over here now and i want more <laughs> um, it's a metal called beryllium it's like a brassish it actually might even be softer than brass but this doesn't scratch anything is it softer than brass No. A little bit stiffer than those, I guess. Of course, these could not be brass. Marketed as brass, but maybe they're not. So like the uh, the cost saving of hollowing out the pallet fork. I never understood that. Whoop! Oh, I had it. Had it and I lost it right there. Let's start over here. There is that.
There we go, that's locked in. I'm trying to get out of the way of the, the camera shot. I'm trying to make it look cool anyway. I just inhaled wrong for a second there. Oh my gosh. I just realized I used the other palette for it. It's all the same. Move that out of the way. So this is actually for the automatic uh, feature on the watch. Their solution uh, to reversing wheels. I personally think it's it's a really cool system, even though it's a bit. Uh, I guess you could call it rudimentary. Rudimentary. So it's ratcheting arms. It's just ratcheting arms, like a like a socket wrench or something. And I think that's pretty dang cool. What's even cooler is it's got a left-handed screw. Uh, there's three lines on the top there. Seiko uses this to denote that it's a left-hand screw. Lefty-tidy on this guy. So how this works is, so this connects to the rotor. You can see I'm turning it counterclockwise. And then if you look over here, you can actually see it. Uh, ratcheting one way. And now if I turn it the other way, Still goes. And how that works is uh, the teeth. Both ha both arms are constantly doing this, which is passing and passing and pushing, however you want to call that. Constantly going. Did I get that hair? <laughs> Did 
Go me. Uh, cool. So this gear train has power. Uh, and the release point is here. You can see there's some energy there. When I, when I put on this uh, balance here, this should, should take off to some degree or another. Don't mind me. <laughs> Again, this hasn't been cleaned or oiled. I guess I don't know the state of how clean it is or if it's got any previous lubrication on it. Don't make that too tight yet. So what I need to figure out, uh, and I don't know if I'll be able to do it here today or anything, is uh, I need to figure out why um, this is this is full of power. This is wound. Now, if, if it has a lot of power or not, that I guess I couldn't really tell you. But this is wound. Maybe it just needed to be one more. <laughs> now, out of pure curiosity, I'm gonna put this on my timing machine. Uh, I don't have a webcam set up for it and I'm not gonna move it. But I'll show you this at least. This is what, uh, Movement sits on. It's already stopped. <laughs> so that I need to figure out. This is stopping for a reason. And I don't think that's an issue of it being not clean or not oiled or anything. Hmm. This is like just out of comfortable height. And I do see on the spring, spring is kind of dirty.
has an okay amplitude. It looks like it's moving, you know, maybe 160, 170. Why is it stopping? That's what I need to figure out. So it's, you know what, and I've got books for stuff like this, but I don't have them here. They're at work right now. I've got them sitting on my bench. Um, the escape wheel looks like it's not getting clear. I just saw a big piece of something on the escape wheel, actually. Trying to see if moving it around has any effect. If you look right here, You see that? It's it, it 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 flashes so fast, but here I'll try to Oh, well now it stopped again. Did it stop on the one that has a piece of something on it? So my thinking here is maybe it's Yep, okay, yep. Oh, it's so hard to see. It's so hard to see it's buried under there. Uh, I'm gonna take the balance off. Um there's a little speck of something on the escape wheel's arm before the foot, if that makes sense. Looks like that's not what's touching the pallet uh, stone. I can't get this. I can get it closer for you guys. Oh, the power of technology. Oh my gosh. You are welcome, folks. So I can't see this close underneath my microscope, but I can see what I'm looking at here. Um, Where am I? Okay. There is, do you see? There's like a hair. See that? Wow. That's something. Uh, whoops. I forgot I could do the digital zoom. So now I'm going to reattach everything. Um, I don't know if that hair was interfering with anything. 
So obviously this needs to be cleaned. Nope, did it again. Okay, I want to do a couple things here. Now, I know this is a uh, less than optimally, optimally clean movement. Right, that's not going to work. Shall I take this off? I want to try a couple things. This is under tension, so it's not moving. There we go. Let me try something first here. Uh, obviously, everything is going to be me trying something. I also want to rule out low amplitude. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little grease on the on the one pallet stone, and then that works itself onto the teeth of the escape wheel. It could be a friction issue. Um, if this had a brand new mainspring friction can be beaten with uh you know higher amplitude with you know more power push through it you know do that I mean, you can cut through No, okay, it's still doing it. Okay. You can cut through uh I don't know. Uh a tomato with a dull knife. It just needs more work. Kind of deal. Um so that's wound that should have power. It was screaming for a second. And then it cut right out again. I see more little hairs. Yeah, I'll have to give this a real good cleaning. 
Uh, I'm seeing it slowly stop by looking at the other gears. Um, like it's screaming. That could be, like I said, uh, just clean it again. I can verify that everything is working right now. Everything is moving. Um, clean it could just be again friction ruining everything in there <laughs> it just stopped again so that could be friction on one of the gears it doesn't seem to be um having a pattern of like oh it's one tooth i don't know it seems because like obviously it runs i haven't timed how long it runs for uh but everything is moving obviously oh there it stopped again but i don't think it would be that dirty Let's take that power out. I don't want to keep putting grease and oil on this while it's uh, not running properly. Uh, yeah, so I'll have to get this one clean. And then uh, whenever I do one of these again, next week, two Sundays from now, that one I can uh, reassemble. Yeah, it is. It is working. So that's that's a start anyway. Um, I will put that back in this box. And then I'll fi I'll get that figured out. Um. Everything involved with the gear train will go in here. Yeah, it works for me. Uh, so that now that that's out of the way, now what I really want to be working on, this guy. This one I'm going to do, uh, it was suggested to me that while I'm learning a new movement, take a piece off, put a piece on. Take a piece off, put a piece on. Take two pieces off, put two pieces on, kind of thing. Instead of trying to digest everything all at once, um, taking big steps, you know, like taking the whole thing apart. Um, take out a piece here, take out a piece there. And uh, yeah, see what happens. <laughs> All right, I'm going to set all of that aside for now on this one. It also has the click whichever way. On the diver's case there. Which I also have on this one. <laughs> this one is a uh, quartz watch, actually. Um, bought it, didn't work. 
swap some parts out on, on it on the inside. Luckily I had some and it works. But I want the other watch that I took the parts from working. So I ordered another watch to get parts from to replace these parts. So those parts can go back in the other watch, but it is working. And that was kind of the main goal there. Uh, yeah. Also, I'll find that clip, run a magnet on the carpet or something. I know it's it's probably right below me, so but I don't feel like getting down and crawling around right now. Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna get this this guy open. Old chronograph, uh, seconds chronograph feature here center wheel chronograph I believe they're called and then uh, it registers 30 minutes up to 30 minutes and I don't have the wrench here at home oh, actually I might have the wrench here oh, I'm pretty sure I do but I'm going to see if I can get this open with this ball here Or maybe I cranked it shut. No, there we go. So I had a movement. I bought a dial. Uh, hands in this case. Watch band I had sitting around. A little bit stiffer than I'd like. I actually have it shaped. I've, I've had it sitting on a on a clamp to try to shape it. Uh, but I want to try maybe soaking it in some rubber conditioner or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, here is this movement. Like I said, it was a uh, Valjou 7730. There you go. It does work. This watch confirmed work. Oh, it's uh, stamped brightly. Probably because uh, this movement came with a Breitling dial. But I don't have a Breitling case. Uh, and I didn't really like the dial as much. I mean, I do, but that dial didn't fit this case it's a whole thing different diameters um i found this case i found a dial that fit the case that's uh just how it goes with with vintage watches sometimes uh, but this does work i'll give it a little bit of a wind here maybe enough to get it going you see it works uh and then we've got uh, the chronograph feature. That's kind of the, the main draw. That's why all of these extra gears are in here. Um, so I'm going to push this top pusher here. Right now I'm just nudging it. So you can kind of see how it's going here. Underneath here. And that's going to move this whole uh, assembly here. So I'm going to watch, hopefully, blah, 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 blah. hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. So this arm's kicking out. There's a spring. This is how, f yeah, <laughs> just watch what all happens here. I'm gonna push it again. So I got a click spring over here. Right? This is gonna move it back. See how many moving parts there are just by pushing one thing? So 
So now I'm going to push the reset button here. Also, it stopped because there's not that much power wound into it. If you guys are wondering. So here and here, do you see these two arms? I'm going to push the reset here. You can see it's got this notch right here. On the notch, post, whatever you want to call that. That's going to push this. This is the hammer. And it's going to slide on this guy a little bit. And then that. Uh... So while it's running. Now the reset wouldn't work. That misses everything there. Wow. That's how it engages the, uh, the, the, uh, the center wheel chronograph. See that little tiny shift? It's all right here. Cool. Hopefully that gives you some idea of what's all happening here. <laughs> There's a lot going on. I think once I get this out of the case here, I'm going to start at the top, the highest screws that I can see, and then work my way down here. Uh, and I've got my little box here. This isn't what I normally use for watch parts. I've got uh, these guys for that, as you can see, there's some trays up here and then a big long tray. These are, uh, this is some Bellmatic parts. Seiko Bellmatic. Uh, I've worked on one of those here before. And I'm probably going to do it again. Uh, I did get it up and running. Figured out. I'll let that run here a little bit. Uh, I did get that up and running. Ah! Why are you stopping with the chronograph? Got it up and running. Uh, I need to time it though. And I think if I do that, I'm just going to take it apart, clean it again. This is running sloppy. Why are you running so sloppy? Of course, this watch hasn't been cleaned or serviced in forever. Not running the chronograph looks like it runs okay. Running the chronograph, you can see it definitely changes. There you can see it ramping up again and spinning more and more and more. And you hit that and it kind of oh, did it actually be back? Hold on. And that could be a spring issue. Uh, I must have lint flying around this room. Little hairs everywhere. I do have an air filter in here. A little air purifier. Uh, but I did clean. I wiped some stuff down. Um, 
before I started here, so maybe there's just some pieces flying around. Yeah, could you can kind of see the barrel under here. Might need a new mainspring. Now, fortunately for a watch like this, I should be able to get a mainspring. I thought I might have already. I'll have to get one ordered. Um, obviously, this is a personal watch, so it's not like a huge rush or anything. So, I do want to wear this watch. Before the end of the year, though. Uh, and I think it's only fair to the watch that I do it after uh, it's been serviced. And I want to be the one servicing it. Why? Oh, probably because it costs a lot less for me to do it. In theory. If you're wondering why I'm not just yanking this uh, gasket straight out, if it got stuck and I pulled it, it would ruin the shape of the gasket. It goes up here. And up there you go again. As far as winding this down, Oh, I see the click. I see the click. See this little shiny guy right in there? I bet you now that I just gave it a bunch of wines. Oh! <laughs> yeah, something's going wrong in there. Uh, where did that click go? You can see it moving back there. I'm going to work on unwinding this. now i have to do it slowly i don't want things to go flying or ripping away on me here actually All right, that should be zero power in there now. Uh, I've got a couple case tabs. A little screw here, a little screw over here. Take those out and uh, get this movement out of the case. Do this guy. Before I take the other one out, I'm actually going to line up all of the hands here. Wow, the uh, neither of the chronograph hands are zeroing out. 
So, yeah, hopefully what's going on here is I just need to do some work with this movement. I mean, I know I need to do work with this movement. Uh, but hopefully it is as simple as this watch hasn't been touched in 10, 20 years. However long it's been. That right there. I'm So I said I was going to take a piece off, put a piece back on. This is stuff that I already know. This is uh, the setting lever, which lets the stem come out. There we go. Movement's out. I really do like the shape of this case. This is like an old stock case. Uh, the lug holes leave something to be desired. There's just not a lot of room. I would love to wear this on some other bands, but I had to consider what I could fit on it. Uh, and even this band almost doesn't fit. You can see it's rubbing up against the case there a little bit. Um, take what you can find though. This is the case that I found. I do, it's all smudgy, but I do like the shape of it. It's a little bit different than what I normally wear. Um, that's okay. I don't know. I like it. I think it goes really well with this band too. Mostly because it's orange. I don't know if you guys, you know, know that I like the color orange or anything. All right. <laughs> Not sure what would give you that idea. So I'm going to set this all aside for now. Ooh. Look at this button here. I'm going to have to work on that too. Looks like. Crown feels okay there. Uh, I do feel a little bit of a grab. But I think that's going to happen. Okay, so I have to get these hands off. Normally I like doing this part, but with a watch like this, I just, I don't know. <laughs> Not my favorite thing to do. Protect the hands there and the dial. So, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. This second hand uh, is a bit of a, a bit of a fib. I can get this flip to its side. No post on there. It's on here. Uh, it was like that before I touched it. <laughs> So it was just kind of a placeholder. I do need to find a new second hand for it. Um, these minute hands and the subdial hands are all new, but that second hand has been sitting on this watch for however long. I mean, you can tell it's in bad shape. It's missing part of the paint on it. Um, so I just got to find a new second hand. That's all that is. Uh, this dial again, old stock, not in perfect shape, obviously, which I kind of enjoy. I think that adds to it a little bit, personally. So 
So there's a screw in this bag. And I don't know what it's for. <laughs> I have no clue. I also really need to shape these uh, hand pullers better. Okay, uh, these two subdial hands are actually different sizes. So I'm going to put one. The one on the left goes in the left. The one on the right goes in the tray on the right. There will be a quiz later, so please remember that. Oh, nope, I, okay, I still can. Uh, I was just thinking about, I should have a, a, an amplitude and uh, rate measurement before I take this apart. So I am going to do that. Don't want that in there. Uh, I'll stick that there for now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to give it a full line. There we go, full line. And it's running. Okay, so I'm going to stick that on my time graph. I'm not going to do any adjustments on it or anything. I just want to see what it runs at. I actually adjusted it before. It's got okay numbers. Okay, so I'm just letting this run for a bit and obviously this is off of a full line instead of like half an hour in. I don't know why I grabbed a watch. Uh, I meant to grab this piece of paper here. Uh, 230, 233 amplitude, 1.5 millisecond beat error. Um, you want that as close to zero as possible. So that's basically just saying that instead of being a true um, you know, tick, 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 tick. It's off by point or 1.6 milliseconds, 1.5 milliseconds. Uh, and then within 10 seconds a day. So 2.30, uh, obviously this has been regulated to run like this. Uh, that's not to say that it's in perfect shape. Um, again, I don't know who the last person to touch this watch, how long ago they touched it or what they did to it. So I have no idea of service history or anything. And if you don't know, then you should clean it.
So now I have to let down all that power again. What I'm doing here is I've got my finger uh, on the bottom, keeping contact. There we go. Power's out, and that should come to a stop. There we go. All right. Uh, the finger on the bottom there just kind of acts as like a brake so it doesn't just go Froop! and ruin everything. Uh, yes, so I actually added a piece here. It's this drive wheel right here. That's what gives us uh, the power from the chronograph. So that wheel I did add. And you can see it's actually a different shade of yellow. But... That's what I found uh, to get it working. I'm going to take this balance off right away. Again, the stuff that I know how to do, I'm not going to work on repeating that process. What I am going to do is tighten up this screw again, the setting lever screw. And... The dial feet screws, because if those go missing, oh boy. I mean, it's not the end of the world, I just don't want them to go missing. Okay. There we go, nice and sturdy in the thing. Uh, take the balance off. Now, I struggle... habitually, famously, uh, if you want to say, with part names and watches. That's not narrow enough. This is a chronograph. It's got even more parts for me to not uh, memorize the names of. So, <laughs> and You have a different screwdriver here instead of that beryllium. Fit the screw hole. Again, I am just going to go into this box and go in order, reverse the order, put it back together. It's really that simple. <laughs> Teach yourself how to do a new watch movement that you've never done before. Actually, in a class that I took, uh, like a web class, they had a 10 slot tray. Looks like this. <laughs> Looks like this. And when we were going through and doing stuff take a piece out put it in tray one take a piece out tray two tray three tray four so on and so forth uh one again so you could reverse the order and keep things in in a row uh but also if you're putting the pieces in the right spots uh, the instructor could be like this piece is in box two grab it out and put it back on uh, here is our balance. It's a wide wheel. There's no screws, like timing screws on, on the wheel, which is fine. We can make adjustments. Uh, feet air, and then uh, speed, if you want to call that. There should be no power in here. In fact, there's negative power that's running backwards. I'm going to go ahead and 
Something else I really need to be paying attention to is springs. Here's one here. There's one down here. This is a... This one down here is a uh, not dangerous spring. That one's not going to go flying anywhere. Here's a spring here. So those are the two that I'm seeing right now. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, pallet off. And this is why I have three sets of screwdrivers. Uh, one, because I like, I like screwdrivers, I like having good screwdrivers. Um, but I also have different sizes, like the blades are different thicknesses and stuff. So we're not going to be making any big mistakes or anything. Oh, this looks like the one. a little bit loose which isn't desirable but we're gonna make it work and then I'm not trying to yank any of these parts off they're designed to come apart and I can just work a little screwdriver in right here. And this is how you lift. In fact, let me use this one. Try to reduce any marks or anything that I might make. Uh, so I'm going to under here and then push down here. That should be loose now. What do I have to make these weird shaped with nothing to grab onto? For the record, this should not be this difficult. But I'm trying to take my time and... There we go. As you can see, this pallet fork doesn't have... Uh, sections missing out of it. So that shouldn't do that erratically. That should all just go. I do need to take this wheel off, which means I, I, I have to go grab a tool. Um, it's, it's a delicate piece. I've snapped them before and it sucks. So I've got the right tool now. I, I, I bought the right tool and we can just lift that out. Um, so give me a moment while I go grab that.
Uh, I had in the other room, in my backpack, I only bought one tool. I needed here and I needed at work. So I just keep it in my backpack. Excuse me. Here's kind of a... Uh, shows you the... What you do there. And this is what it looks like. It's got two teeth on one side and one, or not teeth, kind of lifting arms. Two on one side, one on the other, because this has five spokes, so you can't really get any... They so have to, one side's for the spoke and one side's for the other side. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to protect the the bridge here. Oh, that's just off camera. That's my bad. But as you can see, you just put the two arms around the spoke. Gosh, that's such a satisfying, bloop. just a little, little pop, just a little pop. Uh, and then I put the tool away. <laughs> I don't even want to tell you how much this tool costs <laughs> to do that. All one second of that. And then again, I put that piece of paper there so I don't leave marks because I, I have it in the past where those get really stuck on there and you got to fight with it. Um, and it just, it just leaves marks all over, which I don't want to do. So that is off. So that means this wheel is just free now. It's just free floating there. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to try to take off this spring here and then reattach it. Um, the first. If you are watching this right now, either live or uh, in the future, hey. What is your uh, favorite color slash favorite flavor of cotton candy. Is it blue? Do you like to have your mouth change colors? More of a pink fan? Green? Whoa, green? Okay, so this is not a round spring. It's flat. I'm going to turn this actually. And it looks like the one end is stuck down in that hole there. I'm going to loosen that screw up. Okay, so the spring isn't under tension anymore. You see it's just floating around there. This seems like it's actually a pretty straightforward spring. It looks like it's just a single little L bend there. So that spring is actually pretty secure. Nice. Uh, yep, just like I thought, just kind of one bend on the spring there. There you go, you can really see the literal L bend there. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but that's what I'm calling it. Here, let's reattach it.
this is how I would reattach it, is uh, you don't want the spring under tension uh, before you have a way to secure it. Boom, installed. So again, uninstalling it, just release that tension so it doesn't have a reason. Cool. Okay. So uh, this is more uh, a personal thing here, I guess. Uh, I've obviously been working on watches for some time now. Chronographs, I've never really worked on. I always thought that my skill level was here and I needed to be here to work on the chronograph, uh, which I mean, always you do want to be, you know, you're here, you want to be here. That just goes, that's just a, a given. Um, but I know now, especially sitting here touching this, uh, and I did work on a chronograph at work the other day. Uh, I do have enough knowledge and know-how to uh, work on these without fear or uh, lack of confidence or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Uh, so to me, Okay, so there is a spring. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Here's a spring right here. Right here. That sure is spring. Uh, to get to that, I will figure that out in a second here. So I know I'm going off camera. I can see it out the corner of my eye here. Um. I wish there was a better way to... Oh well. Let's take off this Y arm here. It looks like it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I felt something click, but I think it was my screwdriver, actually. <laughs> this big arm might be next, or maybe I should have done that first, but... Okay, screw there. There's another spring right in here. So that exposes the two hearts on the wheels. Uh, when you go to correct uh, or zero out your chronograph, when you go to reset it, these two arms here are what push back to zero that out and zero that out. So that's your zero position. So the shaft on the other side always has, you know, that same position there. I don't know if I'm supposed to put lubrication on that or not, but I might put a little bit of red 9410. I forget what it's called. Don't quote me on that. Um, it's the red synthetic from 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I have I don't have all these names memorized. That's the red Mobius. The red Mobius one. 9104 or 9401 or 10 or something like that. Um these are being held down by this arm here. So that's what I'm going to take out next. I do see a spring under here. I see the end of the spring too sticking out right here. So that's going to be under this arm. You can kind of see it moving there. Yeah, let's take this arm off. the springs I'm worried about but also I think this screw here is an, uh, an eccentric screw so you can adjust uh, you know the angle and how far this pushes I think this arm is free floating too I think we take off that screw and then this one down here and then that should all just come out. We'll get there when we get there. What sucks is I don't have all these parts laid out on the table. That had some pressure to it. Or tension. Oh, wow. Look at that channel. Okay, I know where the tension came from. Okay. Let me learn. Let me make some mistakes here. <laughs> I want to understand how this works. There we go. There we go. That's reattached. There's an arm here. Right? Yep. Okay. So when that gets pushed, Clicks that out, which releases that, which moves the click over. Gotcha. Okay. This doesn't look like it comes apart. Kind of looks like an elephant to me. <laughs> But that seems like it's two pieces that were riveted together. So. Cool. I don't know what this channel here is for. That might be. Weird. I don't know. Maybe you put some grease in there. I, I honestly don't know.
Okay, so on the bottom of this hand or uh, wheel here, you can see there's a little. See a little arrow underneath it? That's what engages with that wheel. And that wheel is what turns the, uh, the minute. Okay, got that figured out. Uh, this should just pull out. Should. Does not. Uh, oh, I know why. Um, shoot. You remember how I said there was a, uh, the hand? Hold on, let me just check something else. Okay, nothing else seems like it's going to go flying on me. I'm going to flip this back over here. Uh... It's not coming out because there is the post right here. And that lets it not fit through the jewel hole. So, don't mind me. And in all reality, I should not put this second hand back on this, on this watch. So, there is that to consider. Um... There we go. And that is probably one of the scariest things I'll do tonight. <laughs> there it is, stuck on the end there. And of course, with that, the uh, center wheel. That came right out. So in, in a Seiko chronograph that I worked on, the so this is separate, right? This is its own thing. This has its own path that it gets sent. Uh, here's another spring. If you want to use the stopwatch, that this whole hand is engaged. If it's not, it's not touched. It doesn't spin constantly in the watch. In the Seiko corner graph that I was doing, it actually is attached. It is attached and it's like two parts, like an upper and a lower part, and the lower part spins. And it's got some friction, but not a lot. So it can spin freely. And then when you engage the stopwatch, uh, then both spin. Uh, it's neat, it lets you obviously make a you know, central uh, for the second hand there. Uh, but it sucks because if something goes bad on that, it's toast. And uh, you can't really find those anymore. So, you're almost SOL. <laughs> it would be cool if someday... Uh, If they, obviously they're not going to, but if, if Seiko started supplying parts again for stuff like that. It still seems really gunked up, like it's not wanting to move. Um, you don't come out? You do come out. You don't come out? You do come out. Okay, there we go. That's the minute uh, rec recorder, I guess you could call it. That might actually be the, the name here. So underneath here is a spring.
Oh, I just set myself up. You know what? No, oh, that's still under pressure. Tension. There we go. Probably could have taken this uh, intermediate piece off first. Oh well. Yeah, let's go. Let's just take that off now. That spring didn't seem too intricate or tricky, so I'm not too worried about it. It doesn't look too bad in this watch. I think. Oops. I think the biggest issue is that it just has old oil in it. Cool. Again, straightforward for a part. Cool. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I would like to get this one off next. I'm going to take off this screw. And then I don't know if, if that one comes out or not. Oh, that was all off camera. I'm going to undo this screw. That's what this is sliding on. That screw probably has like a, sh a, a shaft with no threading on it there. Where that slides. Is this? Hold on. No, okay, we're good. Ah, yep. All right, that's what I thought. I didn't think it was actually screwed under that. Again, straightforward. Uh... Now maybe maybe this was not an eccentric screw. It looks like we actually could get this wheel out. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to mess with that screw on there, though, just in case it is like an, an, an eccentric thing. Uh, so this is a spring here. Again, nothing really to it. Except for a screwdriver that fits. <laughs> Get a screwdriver that fits, you get the keys to the city. Nope. I do have my other set of screwdrivers too, but... There we go. That one was dicey. I think the main purpose of that is to keep it off the... the plate here. I could be wrong. I've been wrong about things before, I guess. Yeah. 
Okay. There's the other spring that I was talking about. So I'm just, I'm grouping these in with the wheels. For the minutes and seconds. Uh, recorders. Uh, minute recorder. And then just the center column, second hand. Again, straightforward. You can start to see some grease. Kind of, you can see a little outline there. Where was that? Normal watch parts now. Oh yeah, that's greasy in there. Uh, okay, so now I need to look at uh, the buttons here. I'm gonna turn this a little bit. You know what, I'm gonna grab a different holder. At, uh, no, I'll use the same one. Oh yeah, I've got, I've got room. So again, between these buttons, there's a spring. So I think what I can do here is I can take this arm off, one screw there, and then just be ready for the end of this spring. I know it's blurry, but you can tell right there. There's a spring there. This has three slots on the top, so that should be a righty Lucy. And it is. And I have my thumb here. Uh, I don't know what this spring is going to do. Nothing. You can see the spring here. Ah, okay, okay. The end of the spring is underneath this plate right here. Okay. Cool, good to know. Again, I, I think this might be more spots for lubrication along here. Uh, take this piece off first. Oh, come on. Ah, okay. That hole right there is what that lines up with. Can this screw, uh, spring, sorry. Now that spring is pretty stuck where it is. I just want to figure out real quick how I can reattach. Oh, yep. <laughs> There's the spring right there. <laughs> this guy right here. Let me get the screw up here. And again, surface on surface is always a spot for friction. Uh, sometimes watches will say, yes, lubricate those surfaces, any surface to surface. Now, uh, you know, it's not a screw. 
uh, that moves, lubricate it with grease or oil, and then other watches for other parts say, nope, don't, just leave it alone. I think I just lost a screw, or dropped a screw, I didn't lose it. Uh, yeah, well I guess I can't put that back together right now then. Let me get a quick, let me get a quick look for this screw. And I just find it. Nope, that's <laughs> that's not the right screw. Uh, yeah, I will have to find that after I wrap up the stream. Again, I'm just trying to take this apart today. Um, and maybe I take this off before. This, no, because that could, well, I could, no. Hmm. That's what you do there. But how, oh, how do you do that? Oh, that's a dicey one. That's a dicey piece. Uh, could I? I'm wondering if, if there's a way to line it up. Huh. Or maybe, yeah, maybe I am supposed to take that other piece off first. Or this off before the other piece. Shucks. Well, not a big deal. Uh, and again, this room's fairly small. I heard it rolling right here. So I assume that it just dropped straight down here. I'll find it. Um, and if not, I mean, this shouldn't be too hard to find a screw for, right? Okay, so now that that's out of the way, uh, here is the end of the screw or the spring. There we go. And then reinstalling it. Okay, that seems easy enough. I think we are out of spring territory, aside from this one. This doesn't really count, though. Uh, 
At least I wouldn't count it as a spring. Which I think means... Oh wow, look at the uh, grease over on the, right here. <laughs> now that is grease that shouldn't be there, there's nothing there. Wow, cool. So now we are down to uh, manual wind watch. Uh, and from there, it's, I mean, it's really straightforward from there. And there's our keyless works. Wow. Uh, yeah, from, from here, this is literally just basic manual wine watch. This would be like a pocket watch right now. Um, and I think that's where I'll actually end it. Two and a half hours in. Uh, I'm ready to go get some food. <laughs> uh, yeah, 7, 7.30. And then a uh, 7.002 from Seiko crazy stuff so the next time you see this watch i will actually be assembling this one um on the stream but i'm gonna bring this i'm probably gonna bring this to work i've got an ultrasonic watch cleaner at work and i think i'm gonna use that um we'll see i might just need to get my my two machines here at home cleaned up uh, they're the spinner style. If I get those cleaned up and functioning nicely, maybe I'll start using those more. Um, I just like the baskets, or the basket, or however you want to say it. Um, I like the way I'm able to store the parts in the cleaner at work. It just works a little bit nicer. Of course, I can just make a new basket, um, but I don't know how to do that. I don't have the skills for that, so... <laughs> But yeah, that's going to be it for that. Uh, I don't really have an outro. This doesn't fit in there either. Um, yeah, hopefully you, you did enjoy that. Hopefully that's some sort of reference if you need to know how to take apart this watch. I'll update the title and stuff to reflect what I worked on. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I don't know how to get parts for these things. Uh, on one of my old streams that I did, somebody was like, hey, where do I find that spring? And I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a part supplier, uh, but I do fix watches. If you need a watch fixed, let me know. Obviously, I can work on watches. I don't have anything set up for that yet, pricing or forms or availability, but uh, this is what I like to do. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life, as far as I'm concerned. So, the more watches I can work on, the better. 7, 7.30. Wow. Uh, the automatic of this is the 7, 7.750, or the 7, 7.750 line. And those are actually still made today, still in use. Uh, I think Omega uses them quite a bit. It's kind of like the standard in the industry for chronographs, unless uh, people make in-house movements. Uh, yeah. I like it. Doing this tonight, I really have the confidence now that I can work on chronographs a lot more efficiently than I had thought in the past. 
not so scary anymore once you once you finally do it. So that's always a good feeling. But yeah, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Uh, I don't really have an outro or anything. I'm gonna stop this music though. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any watch questions again, let me know uh, if there's something you want to see, anything. That's all I've got. Stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.